Now, the folks you're watching, Deuce, and in the news today, apparently Alec Baldwin killed someone on set with a prop gun. How does a prop gun kill somebody? Well, let's talk about that. First of all, there are several different types of guns used in the movie and TV industry. Number one is a solid cast rubber or plastic style gun. We're not talking about those today. Those are completely inert, just pieces and lumps of plastic and rubber. We're also not talking about the CO2 powered firearm replicas and those are becoming more and more common because they're looking better and better every single year but we're not talking about those either because they are also for the most part completely inert you could possibly put a pellet or bb in here this is a bb gun that looks just like a smith and wesson mmp from a distance on camera especially in low light situations say i was running down a dark alley the audience would not be able to tell that this was completely fake, but it would not pass scrutiny close up. To do that, you have to basically use a real firearm that is converted to use or is currently using blanks. When a director requests a hero firearm from the prop master, what they're telling the prop master to do is get something that looks so real, which I will demonstrate this right here. Let me go ahead and make my 1911 safe. They're asking the prop master to give them a firearm that looks so real on camera that you can put it right up close to the camera and the audience, even someone who was very well versed with that firearm would not be able to tell that there was not a live round in that or that it was a fake firearm. So basically they end up using real firearms that are converted to fire blanks. Now with revolvers, that is very simple. That is very easy. Bolt action rifles, also very easy to convert to blanks. You just throw a blank in there and you're good. But if you're going to be shooting a semi-automatic handgun or rifle, such as this 1911, then you're going to have to do some modifications. It takes a certain amount of effort and force to chamber the next round. And a, a movie style ammunition blank does not have that kind of force. The military blanks usually do, but the movie style blanks are much lower power. They use a different type of gunpowder that has a much bigger flash and, and smoke, and they, they can be actually custom ordered to produce whatever effect that the director and the producer is looking for. In order for a movie blank to operate the action of a firearm, of a semi-automatic firearm, they typically have to put an obstruction in the barrel. So they put an obstruction in the barrel, and there's enough oomph, enough force in that lower power movie blank to still work the action. So if the barrel obstruction came loose and was shot out the barrel with a blank firing scene, that would be a projectile. It would not be a good one. It would not be efficient and accurate, but it would be enough to go out there and hurt or injure or kill someone on set. And that's why the prop master should be welding in that barrel obstruction to make sure that it does not dislodge and go and injure someone on set. A second scenario where a prop gun can kill someone is when the director requests a hero bullet or hero cartridge that's going to be shown on set. So if, see, let me grab my blank here. I do have some blanks for a Mosin Nagant. So I don't have a pistol blank, unfortunately, but they look pretty similar. If you see this on camera, that would not stand out to anyone that knows anything about firearms. But if you see someone loading something like this on camera, then um, that's definitely going to stand out. You're going to know immediately that is a blank. The very first Matrix movie, you can see a lot of blanks on camera. And it really takes, it took me out of the, out of the moment because I was like, those are blanks coming out of that rifle. When a prop master makes a hero bullet or hero cartridge, what they will do is start out with a normal live cartridge. They will remove the bullet empty out the gunpowder, and they'll also make the primer inert. You can't just shoot the primer and then leave that divot in there because there's what a primer looks like when it's been shot. And knowledgeable viewers would recognize that as a dummy round. So you have to make that primer inert without shooting it or without hitting it with the firing pin. And then you just press the bullet back into the empty cartridge with the, the dummy primer in there, and you're good to go. You could smack that thing with the hammer all day long, and it is not going to go off because it is just an inert piece of lead, copper, brass, and a primer, whatever they're made of for that particular round. And just like any other job out there, there are some prop masters that are better than others. And some of them may not have a huge knowledge of firearms, and they might just be trying to fake it till they make it with this new job they got. 
So what they might do is actually I need to go to a revolver for this one. Let's go to a revolver here. Because a revolver does not have a is not going to have a barrel obstruction. Usually because a hero gun, you might be looking down the barrel and you need to be able to see the bullets in the cylinder and of course be able to see the rifling in the barrel and maybe even the bullet in the barrel. So what they will do is let me grab a 38. So what they'll do again is take out the bullet, empty out the gunpowder, and then instead of making the primer inert, they'll just stick the bullet back in there and then shove it into the gun, give it to the actor, and hope for the best. But unfortunately, that creates what's called a squib. And if I loaded that into here, and of course this is empty, by the way. So if I loaded that in here and I went ahead and pulled the trigger, that would ignite the primer, which does not have gunpowder, but it does have enough oomph to push the bullet from the case and the cylinder into the barrel somewhat. And that creates an obstruction that is not secure. It's not welded in place like you would have in a 1911. You're gonna have an obstruction that is still loose. And if you have a blank later on, if you load that again with a blank, the blanks will have a lot more gunpowder. They're, they're not as powerful as military style blanks, but they are powerful enough to shoot the remaining bit of that bullet out of the barrel and of course could injure someone on set. That's exactly how Brandon Lee died on set when they had an obstructed barrel from a previous bullet that was incorrectly manufactured by the prop master. And then later on, they used a blank and the blank shot the rest of the bullet out of the barrel and unfortunately ended Brandon Lee's life. So with all that being said, how did Alec Baldwin kill that person on set? Well, we don't know because we don't know what kind of firearm he was using at the time of the incident. The movie he was acting in is called Rust and it's a Western. Now what age of Western, what time setting it's in, I don't know. Typically Westerns are set in the mid to late 1800s. So there's not a lot of semi-automatic pistols or rifles out there for that time period. There were a couple of prototypes, but they weren't out West. More than likely he was shooting a revolver, either a cartridge style, peacemaker style revolver, or he was using a black powder revolver like this one where you put the powder and bullet into the cylinder individually and you pack it down. Normally prop masters have replaced the cylinder with a conversion style cylinder where they can use blanks just like these. So you take it apart, you take out the cylinder, you put blanks in it and you shoot it so then you're not dealing with messy gunpowder. One part of the news story that I'm interested about is how multiple people were injured with one gunshot because we're not talking about a well-made cartridge shooting out of a firearm that's meant to shoot that. We're talking a blank, we're talking about an accident. So it would have been a lower power projectile coming out. I'm wondering if it was a double barrel shotgun, you know, cause we're in the old west. So I'm wondering if it was a double barrel shotgun and it shot a bunch of accidental projectiles out of the, both barrels. If he was giving them both barrels toward the camera, that could have been an issue and sent multiple projectiles out of those barrels. And it could have been a complete failure of the firearm itself. So going through a bunch of blanks and the barrel just lets loose. I mean, these black powder barrels are made to come off for cleaning and for servicing and whatnot. So it is not uncommon for these to come loose over time. As time marches on, we're gonna find out exactly what happened here. We're gonna find out what firearm was being used. We're gonna find out if it was an ammunition issue. At the end of the day, the prop master is ultimately responsible. They're responsible for providing the actor a firearm that meets the needs of that scene. And that's it. And it should be safe for that scene. Regardless of what they do, it should be safe. Now, I'm not a fan of Alec Baldwin, but unless he snuck a live cartridge onto set, loaded it himself, and fired it toward the person he hit, then he is not responsible, the prop master is. Well guys, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave me a like and go subscribe. A lot more is on the way. If you have any comments, questions, or show it is, leave that in the comment box of the video. I try to get as many as possible. And as always, you guys have a great day. See ya.